Carnation Evaporated Milk presents a star, Rock Hudson, on Stars Over Hollywood. I left Nora French feeling the way I used to as a kid. Alone, unwanted. There was always that loneliness. As a kid, it had been a sickness in me. And now, I felt it again. From Hollywood, California, where the world's favorite stars live and work, the world's favorite evaporated milk brings you stars over Hollywood. Each week, Carnation presents another famous name for motion pictures, television, and radio. Such distinguished performers as Ida Lupino, Joseph Cotton, and Carol Richards. Today's star, Rock Hudson, may currently be seen in the Universal International Technicolor production, Back to God's Country. Today's story, Anywhere USA, was transcribed in Hollywood for Carnation, the milk from contented cows. Curtain going up. It's late afternoon of the day before Christmas in the little town of Newton, and Main Street echoes with the sound of happy, cheery voices and the crunch of clean, white snow underfoot. To Johnny Grayson, swinging along in his Air Force uniform, the scene looks almost familiar, just as it was described to him, back in the prisoner of war camp in Korea. Hesitating in front of the four-story brick hotel, he can almost hear Mike's voice, weak, almost a whisper, but fighting the hopelessness with a memory and a dream. Main Street has trees on it, Johnny. Big ones that form an archway over the street and bend way down with snow in the winter. All the buildings are covered with ivy. Even the hotel, and that's the tallest building in town. Now ah, you'll like it, Johnny. I want you to come back and live there when we get out of this lousy hole. If we get out of this lousy hole... Yes, sir? Hello. I'd like a room. Why, certainly, Lieutenant. If you'll just sign the register there. Hmm. Now, let's see what I have for you. Uh, on the main street side, if possible, where there's lots of good old American traffic noises. Yes, sir. Say, you're not one of the POWs, are you? That's right. Say, I admire you fellows. That must have been an awful experience. It was rough, but it's all over now. The key, please. Oh, uh, yes, yes, here you are. Let's see, uh, Lieutenant John Grayson. Uh, oh, you forgot to put down the city and state where you're from. Where I'm from? All right. Thank you, sir. We like to... Anywhere USA. Sure. Any place I hang my hat, that's home. Oh, by the way, this address, is it close enough to walk? 711 Willow. Oh, yes, Lieutenant Grayson. That's seven blocks south on Main, then turn east. Willow's the second street over. Thanks. <laughs> in New York or Chicago, you take a cab to cross the street. But in a small town, a nine-block walk is nothing. Well, I can call a cab if Thanks, you... Thanks, I'll walk. I want to see all the things he told me about. What's that? Uh, nothing, nothing. Will you be staying here in Newton long, Lieutenant? I don't know. Perhaps just over the holidays. My leave is up the day after New Year's. This be as good a place as any to spend it. Oh, yes, I'm sure you'll like it here. So far, I think it may be just what I'm looking for. You'll find it very pleasant. The lake is just five blocks east. Of course, it's frozen over now. Yes, I know. And the beach is a curving ribbon of gold. We'd sit there for hours, hardly saying a word. And I, then... I don't think I... Oh, I'm just talking to myself. Well, thanks. Thanks for everything. I'll just take the bag up to my room and then look up this address. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, I was walking along Main Street and cramming it all in like a kid eats candy. Sure. There was the Bijou Theater where he took her to Saturday night movies. And Pete's popcorn stand right in the corner. And the old library. Knowing about it, how it would look, it was like coming home. Home. The only home I'd ever known was the orphanage in New York City and then the Air Force. I found the little house at 611 Willow Street and rang the bell.
Yes, what can... Should Johnny Grayson... That's right. How did you know? He sent me a snapshot of the two of you. That was before your plane was reported missing. Oh, I, I'd forgotten about that. May I come in, Nora? Well, all right. Well? It's just like Mike said. Big, comfortable chairs, fire in the fireplace, wide windows. Why did you come here, Lieutenant Grayson? I, well, I guess it was because... It... Curiosity, maybe? Well, you might call it that. To but... see what kind of a girl Mike Draney was engaged to? Well, I don't care to be the object of your curiosity. So if you'll please leave... Uh, no, it wasn't that. You see, I thought I'd... Just what did you think? Well, that... Well, it's Christmas Eve and it's no time for being alone. I thought maybe you'd let me take you out to dinner and we could talk. Talk? About what? About how Mike is dead and you're alive? Standing here in front of me alive? Well, no, I... Johnny Grayson. Oh, I know all about you. See that package of letters there on the desk? Full of talk about you. Oh, please, Nora, I didn't... What a guy this Johnny Grayson is. Always good for a laugh. Never serious. Always kidding everybody. It makes you feel good just to be around him. Well, you see... And I, I swear, he's just a completely wonderful guy. You know, I doubt if he's ever had a serious thought in his life. And I'm beginning to think when you're in a spot like we are here in Korea, that's the way to be. Six months ago, Johnny Grayson, Mike was alive in a prisoners of war camp. Now he's dead. Pneumonia and poof, just like that, dead. You never had a serious thought in your life, but you're alive and he's dead. I, well, there's nothing I can say, but I'm sorry. No, no, I... no, you're not sorry. People like you are never sorry about anything. Except when it's something that happens to yourself. Look, Nora, I know how you feel, you and I... You wouldn't know how I feel, but I'll tell you. Mike is dead, and it's over. I want to forget. I don't want to be reminded of him, and especially by someone like you. You aren't Mike's kind. He was fine and decent and serious. Not a laughing clown like you. <laughs> Why? Why? Mike was all I had. No, I don't have anyone. I know how that is, Nora, because... I'm... Get out! Go away! Leave me alone! Okay. I'll go. Johnny Grayson alive. Alive. It isn't fair. It isn't fair. That letter. Mike's letter. This... No, this one. The only trouble with bringing Johnny back to Newton is you're so darn beautiful he's liable to fall for you. I'm only kidding, honey, and... That's it. Hurt him. Hurt him the way I've been hurt. Hello? Newton Hotel? I wonder if you'd leave a message for Lieutenant Grayson. Yes, that's right. Well, please tell him to call Miss Nora French. French, yes. The phone is Padway 6937. Yes. Thank you. I walked away from Nora French's house feeling the way I used to as a kid. Alone. Unwanted. There was always that loneliness. It never left me. But as a kid, it had been a sickness in me, and I felt it again. All the way back along Main Street, the voices of the laughing, happy holiday crowd seemed to make the herd even worse. I was glad when I got back to the hotel. Well, Lieutenant, I have a message for you. A message for me? A phone call came about ten minutes ago. Oh, thanks. Call Nora French. There's a phone booth over there in the corner. Oh, thanks. Johnny Grayson, I got a message that you called. Oh, yes, Johnny. I, well, I, I, I called to tell you that I'm sorry about the way I acted. Well, that's awfully nice of you. It was just that you coming here was sort of a shock. If I'd known ahead of time, you see, you're, you're the first person who knew Mike in the service that 
I've seen or talked to and... Sure, Nora, I understand. I should have wired you or something. Um, now, maybe you'll change your mind and let me take you out to dinner. Of course, Johnny, I'd love to. And I know a place that's especially nice on Christmas Eve. The Lakeside Inn. Say, that sounds swell. I'll make a reservation. Fine. I'll call for you at, I'll say, 6 o'clock. Well, Johnny, as long as I have my car... I might as well pick you up at the hotel. <laughs> well, this is it. A beautiful girl, and she supplies a car, too. <laughs> well, it's old, but it runs. <laughs> Just my speed. I'll be out in front at six. Bye till then. Suddenly, I felt good again. Like I had when I first hit Newton. That empty feeling was gone like the times Mike talked to me about home and wanting me for a friend always and our plans for working together after we got back to the States. Mike, the only close friend I ever had. And now I was going out with this girl. It's nice here, Nora. I thought you'd like it. Yeah, candlelight, soft music, big silver moon shining on the snow out there by the lake. Mike told me about it, but it's even better. Oh, I'm sorry. I... No, it's all right. I... Realized after you'd left that I was wrong in never talking about Mike. He's been dead six months. Nothing can bring him back. But I... On that day, I got the telegram. In a way, I stopped living that day. I know now that I was wrong. I'm glad you know now, Nora. I am, Johnny. Well, what do you say we dance? Well, I'd, I'd love to. At midnight, we locked the car in Nora's garage, wished each other a Merry Christmas, and I walked back to the hotel in a kind of a trance. I kept hearing the music, seeing her face in the soft candlelight. Oh, it was crazy, but well, the thought kept running around in my mind. Maybe, well, maybe someday. Oh, but a girl like Nora French didn't fall in love twice that easily. No, it was crazy. <laughs> the day before Christmas when Lieutenant Johnny Grayson arrived in the little town of Newton. And in the three days since then, much has happened. He has called on Nora French, the fiancée of his dead Air Force comrade, Mike Draney, and she has abruptly ordered him out of her house, only to phone later and arrange their first date. To Johnny, Nora's emotional change has seemed only natural. To Nora, it's just a part of her plot to hurt Johnny as she has been hurt. Tonight, as they skate on the little lake, Mike's voice seems to come to him again. You know, Johnny, Nora always said if anything ever happened to me, she'd never marry anyone else. But I'd wanted to, Johnny. I'd wanted to. Ever since her folks were killed in that accident four years ago, she's been alone. So I'd want her to. Say, this isn't bad at all. I think we'd better skate holding hands until you get used to it. Used to holding hands? No, used to skating, silly. Well, I was afraid that's what you meant. Come on, take my hand. There now. Isn't it easier this way? Mm hmm. And much pleasanter. You're a lot of fun to be with, Nora. Am I, Johnny? Yeah. You're swell. Just as I knew you'd be. You know, Mike told me about this lake a lot of times. Did he? Sure. How you and he used to come here skating in the winter and. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Well, that's all right. And what? Well, the hot dog roasts in the summer here on the shore. I've always wanted to go to a dog roast. Hmm? Let's do it. With all this snow and ice? I'm afraid. Oh, what? <laughs> it's a good thing we were holding hands. Now, what'd you say about... We'll have a make-believe roast, Johnny. At my house in the fireplace. We'll just imagine the beach and the waves and the moon. And... How about it? Swell. When? Tomorrow night? Tomorrow night it is. It's a date. <laughs> Madam, allow me to present you with one hot dog. Slightly burned, but otherwise in good condition. <laughs> oh, it looks awful. But I'll eat it anyway. Just so I won't hurt you. Your feelings. I love beach parties, don't you? Yeah, even if this one is synthetic. From here on, burnt hot dogs are a must with me. I'll send you a fresh supply once a week. And I'll be the most popular guy in my quarters. <laughs> Four days. 
Just think, I've known you four whole days, Nora. That's the longest I've known any girl. I don't believe it. It's the truth. Well, why, Johnny? Oh, I don't know. I've... Well, I've moved around an awful lot, and when I did stay in one place for very long, I... I never seemed to meet anyone... Well, anyone like you. Like me? Just like you. Meaning what, Johnny? Meaning that... Oh, oh uh, there goes my hot dog right in the ashes. Oh, well, ashes are a must with hot dogs, too. Johnny, what did you mean? Say, look at the time. I gotta go and let you get some sleep. Let's do this again, Nora, soon. Something had stopped me from going on. I was sure about myself, but Nora, I wanted her to be sure. I knew all about that thing called loneliness and what it could do to you and how you'd fill it with almost anything to kill the ache. I was careful the next few evenings. And then, on New Year's Eve, it happened. We were driving home from a dance. How many more days, Johnny? Two. I have to go right back after New Year's. And then? Reassignment. Here in the States somewhere. You're going to stay in the Air Force? I guess so. Now that, well, the plans Mike and I had made, not much sense to them anymore. No. No, I suppose not. But I'm glad I saw it in his hometown. For a while, it seemed like my own. The big trees, the lake, the Bijou Theater. Well, here we are. <laughs> you sound so final. There's something about coming to a complete end. That depends on you, Nora. Kiss me. Johnny, kiss me. <laughs> Nora. What in the world? Is... You're in love with me, aren't you, Johnny? You're in love with me. Of course I'm in love with you. <laughs> Stop that crazy laughing. I can't. I can't. Because it's so terribly, terribly funny. Funny? I don't see it. You don't see. Of course you don't see. I'm not in love with you, Lieutenant Grayson. I hate you. Hate me? But I... I told you that first day. Mike is dead and you're alive. You're sitting here in this car instead of him. And I hate you for it. Why couldn't it have been you instead of him? Cut it out. I wanted to hurt you the way I've been hurt. And you did. Even better than you know. Oh, I'm glad, Johnny Grayson. Because now maybe you'll know a little of how it feels to be hurt inside. Being so lonely you want to die. I didn't have to meet you to know that, Nora. I've known it and been fighting it all my life. Hmm? Sure, I look surprised. You see, I grew up in an orphanage. I didn't even have a name. They just pulled Grayson out of the air the way a magician pulls a rabbit out of a hat. Never even had a close friend until I met Mike. It's hard to trust people when you've been shoved around and stepped on all your life. But I met Mike and got to like him better than anyone I'd ever known. The only trouble was it wasn't until the night before Mike's last mission that I stopped the gagging and let him know how I really felt. Sure, Johnny Grayson. What a guy. Always laughing. Well, I found out it's better to keep on laughing. It covers up a lot of ugliness. So keep up the gags, Nora, and keep them funny like this one was, and you'll never be short of laughs. I checked at the railroad station and found there was an eastbound train about 1 a.m. I went back to the hotel to pack, trying not to think, trying not to remember, trying not to hurt inside. Oh, good evening, Lieutenant. Is there something... I want to pay my bill. I'm checking out. But I thought you were staying until after New Year. I changed my mind. Well, that's too bad. We've enjoyed having you here. Thanks. I hope you'll come back when you have another leave. I don't think so. I don't think I'll come back to Newton ever again. What are you doing here? Johnny, I, I... I don't know what to say. Haven't you said everything already? Oh, I was wrong, Johnny. So wrong. Look, Nora. We went through all this once before, and I fell for it the first time. I don't know what you're trying to do or why, but please, this time... Please, please listen to me. I meant the things I said. I, I mean, at the time I said them, I, I thought I meant them. But when you left, I realized all the time I... I thought I was pretending I really wasn't at all. Look. Sitting there alone in the car, suddenly I was mixed up. Suddenly I was wishing you hadn't left. 
And I remembered all the things we'd done together this past week. Great fun, wasn't it? Please, you've got to believe me. I know now it it was wonderful. And I know now you're everything Mike said you were. You made me forget. You helped fill something that was so empty. You made me feel again and laugh again. Please, Johnny, you've got to believe me. Look, Nora. I'd like to believe it. Because I meant what I said. I... I fell in love with you. Do you... still love me? Guys like me don't fall out of love. They just try to forget. Oh, don't forget, Johnny. Please don't forget. All right, Nora. I won't forget. Johnny. And someday, when you're very sure... I'll come back to know you, to you. I won't be lonely anymore, knowing that. No. No, I don't think either of us will ever be lonely again. Would you... kiss me goodbye? Happy New Year, Nora. It will be a happy New Year, darling. For both of us. After this war, Johnny, it, it won't be back to, to anywhere, USA, for you... It'll be back to Newton. Back home. And so the curtain comes down on the final act of Anywhere, USA. And now, Rock, in appreciation of your fine performance today, we'd like you to have this holiday season bouquet for your home. Red and white carnations, just like those pictured on every can of carnation evaporated milk. Thanks a lot, Art. And for now... Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Rock Hudson. Supporting Mr. Hudson were Gene Bates, Barney Phillips, and Ted Bliss. The program was directed by Don Clark.